Sunflower Electric Power Corporation, cooperative members working together to generate power so you can enjoy the benefits of life in central and western Kansas. Sunflower Electric Power Corporation, energy done right. Good evening and welcome to a live debate between the candidates of the 111th District of the Kansas House of Representatives here on Smoky Hills Public Television. I am your moderator, Dr. Jay Steinmetz, Assistant Professor of Political Science at Fort Hayes State University. We have here to my right uh, the incumbent, Republican Barb Wassinger, and to my left we have the challenger, Democrat Ebert Phelps. Welcome both of you and thank you for having this debate. The format of the debate will be as follows. Each candidate will have a 90-second opening statement. We will then go through a list of questions, and each candidate will be given 60 seconds to answer. The candidate who goes first will alternate as we go through the questions. Each candidate will have, then, a 90-second closing statement. The candidates have not seen the questions in advance. Of course, we encourage civility and a healthy, robust debate. I think I'll probably have a lot easier job than Chris Wallace did two nights ago. Um, so let's get started with opening statements. We did a coin flip to determine who would go first, and our challenger, Mr. Phelps, goes first. Mr. Phelps? Well, good evening, and uh, I want to extend my thanks to uh, Smoky Hill Television for uh, sponsoring tonight's program. Having served for many years in the legislature, I believe the turnover in members of the past few election cycles has resulted in a legislative body with many members lacking experience in government, institutional memory, and of course, a historical perspective. Given my past years of service, I bring all three of those strengths to the table. During my tenure, I developed a reputation for working not only with my party, but also with those members across the aisle. In my opinion, a cooperative effort with other members, as well as the governor's office and the judicial branch is necessary is a necessary formula for achieving positive positive results in moving Kansas forward. As in the past, my goals will be to provide a supporting vote to expand our state's health care program known as Medicaid expansion and bring matching federal dollars to Kansas, which will strengthen Hayes Medical Center and the rural hospitals in western Kansas, but most importantly to provide health insurance to those in need. I would also continue my unwavering support of education at all levels. After all, that's our future and it's our best investment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Phelps. And an opening statement from our incumbent, Representative Wassinger. My first term in office was one for the history books. I, no one could have imagined how the session ended or what COVID would do to our state. My first year in my office, I worked to bring awareness to the Northwest Corridor Project in Ellis County. This is very important for the citizens of the 111th district because it brought federal and state eyes and ears to see how dangerous the corridor was and how the safety on that road was lacking for the companies that are, are located there. I coordinated a visit with legislative aides from Senators Moran and Robert's office, I, Congressman Roger Marshall, Kansas Secretary of Commerce David Tolan, Kansas Assistant Secretary of Transportation Lindsey Douglas, Senator Rick Billinger, uh, State Representative Ken Rogers to Ellis County and the, the, the commissioners in the city and as well as the county joined us on a, on a bus tour of the corridor and look, it just so happened that it was very wet that day so they could see how hard it was to get around. Representatives of Hess Services and Midwest Energy located on the corridor gave tours and the result was 300,000 from the Com Commerce Department of Kansas a million from the Kansas Department of Transportation and six, a $6.5 million build grant from the federal government. And this was all within, with, with a, a meeting that came about within the first month or two from of my office. Thank you. Great, thank you, Representative Wassinger. Um, let's go to the questions now. Um, Representative Wassinger, you can go first with this first question we have. Um, what specifically would you do to improve civility in politics and trust in government? 
Well, that's, that's a, a tall order. Um, but I think, and I had this discussion earlier, I think we've lost a certain amount of respect for one another. Both sides have been uh, not very civil, in, in, at least on the federal level. Um, I believe there's an, a lack of respect for human life, whether it's the, the unborn or whether it's seniors. And I think when you don't respect human life, you're, you're not kind to other people. You don't find any value in them. And I would like to see that come back uh, where we are civil to one another. Unfortunately, it's, it's, sometimes it's just one side that can remain civil. So I think it's just a matter of going back to the basics, just to respect one another, respect human life, and I think we can get back. Okay, thank you, Representative Wassinger. And the same question for you, Mr. Phelps. What specifically would you do to improve civility in politics and trust in government? Well, one of the things that I, I recall when I first entered the uh, legislature back in 1997 was that uh, there was a, a great deal of uh, civility there and, and camaraderie and so forth. There was nothing uh, unusual to see, uh, you know, two Democrats, two Republicans working on issues together. And it was really that, uh, you know, that uh, kind of an atmosphere in the committees. And I think that uh, one thing we can all do, at least I will do, is uh, practice that same kind of civility in, in the committee, uh, in the committee environment. And that's where, you know, you're spaced out, sitting between uh, other members of the, uh, or other party members. And I think that's where you can get to know people. And I think when you build those relationships and make that effort, uh, which I've always, you know, tried to practice. I think that's the the start of it, and uh, and uh, you know, I got to see that uh, even my last two years there in, in uh, 2017 and 2018, where people were, you could just tell there was more of a friendly okay, thank atmosphere. You, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. I appreciate it. Um, let's go to a second question here, and this question, uh, Mr. Phelps, you'll answer first. Uh, what uh, do you support Medicaid expansion? Why or why not? How does the issue of Medicaid expansion affect residents in Western Kansas? Well, I have, uh, I'm on record. I've uh, actually voted in favor of Medicaid expansion on uh, three different occasions. In fact, in 2017, we passed it uh, with, I believe, uh, 80, 89 members in the Kansas House voted in favor of it, only to be uh, vetoed by the governor. We voted on it again, and this time, uh, when it passed, uh, there was a problem with the Senate not even taking the issue up. So as far as the importance uh, and why do I support it, first of all, uh, you, heck, you can look at it from an economic development standpoint. Uh, we've passed up on $4.7 billion. You can go to the Kansas Hospital Association website and see a ticker there clicking off how much money. How does it affect Western Kansas? Obviously, the big beneficiaries are going to be our rural hospitals, our uh, critical care centers as well as uh, places like Hayes Medical Center. So it's, it's gonna have a big impact if we ever get it passed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Phelps. And the same question for Representative Wassinger. Do you support Medicaid expansion? Why or why not? How does the issue of Medicaid expansion affect residents in Western Kansas? Well, I think healthcare affects everyone across the state. Uh, but what we were neglecting to look at um, is that Medicaid alone will, expansion alone, will cost the state between 80 and 90 million dollars for, and that will have to take that away from other places, which we, we have a, a budget crunch this year because of the COVID uh, crisis, and, and the only way to do that is to raise taxes across the board. And I, what I've heard door to door is they're worried about taxes going up, they're worried about jobs and economy, healthcare at this point has taken a back seat because they're worried about whether or not they'll have a job tomorrow with businesses closing. So I think I also need to see that there's a, there are more, there's a premium for people and it needs to be income based as well. Thank you very much, Representative Wassinger. Let's go to our next question here. And Representative Wassinger, you will begin this question, answer. Um, what are specific things state government can do to improve the health and well-being of Kansans? Well, I think there are many things they have done trying to um, promote with, between can care and other things. I don't think we can make people get healthier. We have to convince them they want to be healthier. You don't want uh, 
we have an obesity problem in the nation. We have a lot of issues. We need we need to get people out and and paying attention to their their health and health care. So I, I don't I the the gov the pardon me. The, Kansas can certainly do a lot of different things with um, public information programs and, and things like that, but in honesty, when it comes down to it, you have to want to be healthier and you, want to, you have to want to be, uh, make a change. Okay, thank you, Representative Wassinger. And the same question here for Mr. Phelps. What are specific things state government can do to improve the health and well-being of Kansans? Well, I'd go back to the uh, question prior to that, and uh, one of the first things we need to do is pass Medicaid expansion, expand our can care program. As I mentioned, we've passed up on $4.7 billion, while uh, at this point in time, 39 other states uh, are either have passed it or are in the process of doing so. That's going to free up a lot of money. Uh, Representative Wessinger pointed out the, the cost of it, but the fact of the matter is, we're spending a lot of money, taking money from other areas to pay for that. And once, if we do pass Medicaid expansion, we're going to have all that money uh, that we can uh, use instead of the money that we're taking from other programs and free things up. Also, as we invest in education, you know, you, uh, uh, you have your nutri nutritional programs in our elementary or K-12 system. And uh, as long as we keep our funding up for education, uh, we're going to also be able to, uh, you know, promote those nutritional programs in our schools. Okay, thank you, Mr. Phelps. And let's go to another question here. This time, Mr. Phelps, please, you uh, answer first. How well do you think the Kansas state government responded to the COVID-19 outbreak? What was missing in their response? How can we do better, not just with COVID, but the potential of future viral outbreaks or public health crises? Well, I think the response uh, initially out of the governor's office was uh, what was needed to be done. Uh, the governor followed the recommendations of Dr. Fauci on the federal level and the uh, uh, Center for, C for Disease Control, as well as uh, Dr. Lee Norman uh, with Kansas Department of Health and Environment. And one of the things that they, you know, uh, you know promoted was the wearing of masks. And so the governor pushed for that, but uh, she met opposition from uh, the Republican leadership in both the House and the Senate. And then that trickled down to our county governments as well. We just saw the state of Kansas go over a thousand uh, COVID cases since the beginning. Uh, if you look on the Kansas Department of Health and Environment website every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right after noon, they uh, post uh, the you know the totals, and we jumped over a thousand between Wednesday and uh, and today. So uh, it's uh, one of those things that uh, the governor has been listening to the medical people. Other people have made a uh, you know, okay. a political issue out of it. Time's up. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. And the same question for Representative Wassinger. How well do you think the Kansas state government responded to the COVID-19 outbreak? What was missing in their response? How can we do better, not just with COVID, but the potential of future viral outbreaks or, or other public health crises? I think we've really learned a lot during this past year. And, and I think the biggest problem at the beginning that the state used was a blanket approach to every county. Um, they were sh shutting down businesses like on Main Street of Hayes that never had more than a couple of people in the business. So I think the mistake that we, the first mistake we made was just a, a complete blanket closure of everything. Um, furniture stores that never had that many people in them, particularly in downtown uh, areas and rural areas. So I think we're all, if we all just respect one another and take care of of our, ourselves as well, well as our families, I think that we will do well. And, and the state just needs to remember that we're both rural, rural and urban and both need to be treated differently. Okay, thank you, Representative Wassinger. And now our next question, Representative Wassinger, you can uh, begin this one. How do we balance the state budget going forward and what difficult decisions do you foresee that should be made? Well, it's hard to tell until you see the, num the, the final numbers to figure out what we need to do, but we are going to have to tighten our belts. We spent a lot of money on uh, education. Uh, we need to spend more money on mental health, which, by the way, the, the governor vetoed when we tried to put money into mental health and uh, take care of our intellectual disability, developmental disability um, population. So I, I think... Um, 
I think that's really my answer. Thank you, Representative Wassinger. And the same question for Mr. Phelps. How do we balance the state budget going forward? And what difficult decisions do you foresee that should be made? Anytime you're looking at the a budget, uh, of course, you have to take into consideration how the revenues are responding to you know, current conditions. Surprisingly, even with the uh, impact that COVID-19 has had on the state of Kansas, uh, revenues aren't doing too bad. Our sales taxes uh, are up. Uh, a, a lot more than anticipated. They're probably not, uh, you know, equivalent to in years past. But the fact of the matter is, uh, we need to take care of our constitutional duty, which is to fund our uh, K-12, our public education system, and then we can go to work on all the other areas that uh, need to be looked at and see where cuts can be made. And uh, at this time, we don't really know what the final figure is going to be as far as what kind of a budget figure we're going to be working with. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we've got to continue seeing those uh, revenues go up and also uh, plan for, you know, whatever cuts need to be made. Okay, thank you, Mr. Phelps. And the next question, uh, Mr. Phelps, if you can answer first. Rural economic development in western Kansas is a tough issue. It cuts across a number of other policy concerns such as water, environment, education, infrastructure, immigration. What should be the priorities when looking at the complex issue of rural economic development in western Kansas? Well, one of the things that, uh, you know, we did a few years ago in the legislature was we, you know, we've done a number of things, you know, to incentivize, uh, you, know, p uh, you know, medical students to finish their medical degrees and then move back to western Kansas and have their, uh, you know, their schooling uh, costs forgiven. Uh, that way they can get started, you know, without a, a huge debt hanging over their head. But we also did, uh, you know, a number of things as far as um, uh, providing uh, economic uh, zones in, in uh, western Kansas, as well as other parts of the state. In addition to that, I, I just keep going back to all the benefits we'd receive if we passed the, uh, the CanCare expansion and uh, saw that money being invested in those rural hospitals, which are oftentimes the best jobs in those communities. Likewise, when we look at education funding, we've got to keep that education funding level up in our rural communities because you have uh, a lot of jobs created by those uh, school, those uh, USDs in those uh, various rural communities. And those are the people that are going to be, you know, Thank you, Mr. Phelps. spending their money. Time's up. Uh, and now the same question for Representative Wassinger. Uh, rural economic development in Kansas is a tough issue that cuts across a number of other policy concerns, such as water, environment, education, infrastructure, immigration. What should be the priorities when looking at the complex issue of rural economic development in this state? Well, I think the, the biggest, the key to economic development in our rural areas is to make sure that all Kansans have access to broadband, uh, to, in the, to the internet. People now, more than ever, are working remotely. And you have places like Agro, where uh, Representative uh, Ken Rogers lives. He has dial-up. I don't think a lot of people realize that there are, there are dark spots within Kansas that have no service whatsoever. And I think if we, if we concentrate on getting that taken care of, we, we can start doing other economic development growth because we have the ability to work from everywhere. And, and by the way, CanCare uh, reimbursements need to be raised up. And the governor just said rural hospitals will not be saved with Medicaid expansion. Okay, thank you, Representative Wassinger. And now our next question, Representative Wassinger, you answer first. Okay. Um, what specific policies, aside from the ones that you've just mentioned, do you support that would advance rural economic development in Western Kansas and the broader economic environment within the state of Kansas? Well, I think I've answered that question. I think the, the real key is to um, expand broadband throughout the state and give everyone a level playing field with their access to the internet. And I think that will be, make a big difference. And then we do have programs already set up within the state of Kansas to, to encourage people to be there. We also have to figure out a way to get childcare for all these people in, in rural areas because that's also very difficult. So those are some of the things that, that I think it's all building blocks. You've got to start somewhere and you've got to keep going. And we also need to try to lower the food sales tax. Uh, we tried to do that two or three times in the legislature this year and it was vetoed. Um, but all those things come together and, 
and make a big difference for rural economic development and state development. Thank you, Representative Wassinger. And now for Mr. Phelps, the same question. What specific policies, aside from ones that you've already named, do you support that would advance rural economic development in western Kansas and the broader economic environment in the state of Kansas? I think when you look at uh, you know, our state in general, we're definitely an agriculture state and especially in western Kansas. So we need to keep investing in those things that you know, will enhance the, the productivity of uh, western Kansas farmers. And one of those is right located in Hayes, Kansas, and that's the, uh, uh, you know, the Kansas State uh, Ag Research Center. And that's, you know, their efforts out there is what's uh, really uh, promoted agriculture in the western part of the state, improved uh, yields on, on, on wheat uh, production as well as cattle production as well. So we need to keep our funding up for that. And then also the lifeline for rural communities is their highway system. And as long as we uh, you know, can keep that up with our uh, transportation programs, uh, that's a vital uh, you know, necessity for rural Kansas, you know, getting their products to market as well as uh, you know, uh, just within those communities. Okay, thank you, Mr. Phelps. Um, let's go to our next question here. Mr. Phelps, you will answer first. What are your top three priorities when it comes to government spending? With government spending, I would uh, definitely put education at the top of the list. I've pointed out many times that, uh, according to our state constitution, that's the only thing that we really have to uh, do constitutionally, and that is provide an adequate education for every child in the state of Kansas. So with that, uh, you also have the whole issue of uh, health care. And, uh, you know, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, if we can expand our can care program, we take care of a lot of people and we keep our hospitals open, keep them functioning. And uh, I'm going to disagree with Representative Wassinger. I, I believe that uh, according to all the hospital administrators I've talked to in western Kansas, uh, the expansion is going to be a big benefit to them. And then uh, you can't uh, overlook the uh, transportation program as well. But I'll go back to my second point, not only is it, or my first point, not only is it K-12 education, but just education on any level, I believe, is a, is a great investment for our state. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. And the same question for Representative Wassinger. What are your top three priorities when it comes to government spending? Well, I think we need to stop taking from the Kansas Highway Department, uh, Department of Transportation, I should say. We, we, I voted for the 10-year Eisenhower Legacy Transportation Bill, so that, that started to put money back into transportation where previous legislators have taken it out and using it for other things. So, so that's, that's very important that we do that. It's also important to, keep, um, to work to keep jobs and, and build the economy for people in Kansas, as well as finding affordable health care uh, right now, CanCare is, is, is really suffering because they're not getting uh, reimbursed at the, state, at the state level like they should. So those are some of the things that need to be done and make sure that we take care of all of the, the Kansans that are in our district and beyond. Okay, great. Thank you, Representative Wassinger. And let's go to our next question here. Uh, we'll begin with Representative Wassinger to answer this question. Uh, let's talk about the election in November. Um, do you support mail-in voting? Uh, should voters be worried about the process? And finally, do you support expanding mail-in voting for future elections? I think that it's already in place to do mail-in voting. Um, and so I, I am not as concerned. I think for me, maybe I'm old school. I like to vote at the polls. I like to see it. We, and I think that we need to always be careful, um, particularly now with the, the mail not being quite as reliable as it has been in the past. So I don't see any problem with mail-in balloting, and I think, I, I, I know that the last election that um, my opponent and his, his uh, fellow Democrats had said that everything was, was not true and, and uh, so there was a lot of uh, false votes that were going towards me. And I, I think my county clerk, our county, county clerk, has done a good job trying to get things updated and trying to make sure that everybody gets their voice heard. Okay, great. Thank you, Representative Wassinger. And now the same question here 
for Mr. Phelps. Let's talk about the election in November. Uh, do you support mail-in voting? Should voters be worried about the process? And finally, do you support expanding mail-in voting for future elections? Well, I think given the uh, situation we find ourselves in now with the uh, pandemic, the COVID-19 issue, uh, it's just imperative that we keep people safe. And as I mentioned earlier, our numbers are going up, um, you know, exponentially in, uh, in Ellis County. So uh, as far as the local election, I, I'm definitely in favor of the mail-in ballot as well as across the country. I think it's the, the way we need to do things nowadays with uh, keeping the cost of voting down and also making sure that as many people have access to voting as possible. Uh, as far as the last election, I'm going to disagree with uh, Representative Wassinger. The question was uh, voting machines. It had nothing to do with mail ballots or paper ballots. And uh, interestingly enough, those uh, machines were discarded shortly after that election. But that's passed. Right now we're looking at uh, mail ballots. and. I, I think it's the wave of the future. I look at uh, Aurora, Colorado has been doing mail ballots for 30 years and no problems. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. And our next question, we're going to go with Mr. Phelps answering first. Uh, continuing on with uh, elections, going forward in the future, what can the Kansas legislature do to ensure the integrity and transparency of our voting system in the state? I think that uh, it's, it's really kind of a situation that's not up to the legislature. We have to have faith in our county clerks. And, uh, you know, there's some checks and balances there, too. They have guidelines to follow set forth by the Secretary of State. So I think, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, uh, there's still integrity in, in voting. And it's, it's all about, uh, you know, getting, uh, you know, qualified people into, you know, and trained people into our, our polling uh, uh, places throughout the state and also you know, providing uh, access to those sites. So uh, I think moving forward, we're on the track. There's a lot of attention to voting right now because of all the things on the national level. And uh, so I'm, I've got a lot of faith in our voting system, but I think uh, more and more uh, oversight has to be in place. And I think each party's gonna do that at the polling places by having poll watchers. And I'm all in favor of that. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. And the same question here for Representative Wassinger. Going forward, what can the Kansas legislature do to ensure the integrity and transparency of our voting system in the state? I have to agree that it's, it's the Kansas Secretary of State who is responsible for elections, and then from there it goes to county clerks. So I think there is transparency and integrity, and I think the people of Kansas deserve that. And I believe that we just need to continue uh, respecting our voters and making sure that they have access to voting. And anyone who needs to register to vote can do so uh, on the Ellis County website if you're in my district and I'm sure I'm on other websites. But I, I think it is, there is integrity in our voting system. I, I believe that, that we've done a good job with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Representative Wassinger. And let's move to a different question here, a different topic. And Representative Wassinger, you begin uh, answering this question. Uh, what is the state of agriculture in western Kansas? How can we improve agriculture in the state to continue to be a leader in the country? Well, we, we do need to be strong uh, in supporting our ag agriculture within the state. It's, it's very frightening right now. Many, the suicide rate for farmers is going up. Their, their commodity prices are down. Uh, there's, there's just so much that we need to do, and so we need to provide mental health uh, to these people and help them get past these crises. In the meantime, uh, the Department of Agriculture within the state is doing everything they can to make sure that uh, our farms continue and continue to thrive to feed the whole country. Thank you, Representative Wassinger. And now the same question for Mr. Phelps. Uh, what is the state of agriculture in western Kansas? How can we improve agriculture in this state to continue to be a leader in the nation? I mentioned before, uh, you know, the work done by the uh, Kansas State Ag Research Center, uh, you know, located on the south edge of Hayes. That is the, um, you know, a real crown jewel, I think, for the city of Hayes because that's the uh, largest dryland experiment station in the world. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, you know, 25 acres or 25 bushels an acre was considered a good harvest. 
and nowadays we hear of you know people getting 70 and 80 bushels an acre that's all a result of efforts done at the uh, Kansas Ag Research Center and uh, subsequently uh, to keep that going we need to keep investing in uh, higher ed which that is part of and then that money goes to that uh, research center and they can keep you know making sure that our farmers have the latest technology and the latest um, you know uh, techniques for farming and improving in that area and subsequently we will have uh, you know continue that the the markets is a big issue right now and we have really no control over that because that's all a federal issue thank you mr phelps i appreciate it and let's uh, go with a different question here uh, mr phelps you answer first what specific policies do you support that could improve the foster care system in Kansas? Well, foster care uh, is in, uh, found itself in a really bad situation, and I think it was when we privatized it, meaning the state, uh, you know, lost or turned it over to where, uh, it was during the Brownback administration, I believe, where they made it a uh, private entity. And subsequently, you don't have the oversight like you did when it was, uh, you know, a state agency. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the foster care program in the state of Kansas couldn't account for 70 children. And I mean, to me, that's just unacceptable. Uh, I don't know what the reporting system is right now. When a child doesn't come home, a lot of times the foster people would say, uh, foster care people would say, well, that child was subject to flight. Well, that's, you know, yes, many of them are. But as far as, uh, you know, these kids just turn up missing, uh, where's the reporting system in there? So. We definitely have to have more oversight on foster care, obviously put funding back into it, and I think bring it back under state control so that we have uh, more oversight and uh, more responsibility. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. And the same question here for Representative Wassinger. What specific policies do you support that it could improve the foster care system in Kansas? Well, I've had many meetings with uh, the Secretary Howard uh, who is in charge of uh, the foster program in, in Kansas, it breaks my heart the way these kids get uh, pushed around, left in different places, yanked from homes, foster even yanked from foster homes and brought back to bad situations. I have continually asked them to streamline their, uh, their foster parent application. I have foster parents here locally that have to re redo volumes this thick of, of uh, reports. They need to be able to make sure that they make it easier for those good foster parents to ha continue to help the children and we need to put our, our um, money where our mouth is in order to take care of these children if they're missing and that's not acceptable. So. Thank you Representative Wassinger. Let's go with another question here. You go first Representative Wassinger. What can state government do to improve mental health access in rural Kansas? Well, like we talked about today at the mental health meeting, uh, I was on Zoom. Uh, they, they're trying to get more mobile testing and, and, and classifying of these uh, mental health issues. Unfortunately, right now, our mental health hospitals are the jails. If you go into the jails, you'll see, uh, as I've taken different tours, mountains of medications trying to, to help these people that probably shouldn't be in jail, but should be um, should should be on the, uh, getting healthy, he getting some medication. So we we did try to put more money to uh, mental health, but the governor had vetoed that. So I will continue to push for mental health services. We have a great High Plains Mental Health. And I know that uh, we need it. And our, our kids now, our, our kids with special needs like that have been shuffled off to Wichita or Kansas City. And so we need a place here. Thank you, Representative Wassinger. And now the same question for Mr. Phelps. What can state government do to improve mental health access in rural Kansas? Uh, I was at that uh, meeting today as well. And, and what I took away from that was that we have excellent staff. Uh, we probably are shorthanded. And of course, one of the issues they have right now is the length of time between having somebody uh, either receive outpatient or, uh, you know, screening or actually being uh, ed committed into, uh, say, Larner State Hospital. And also within that framework was a issue of uh, waiting lists. 
And so obviously, uh, you know, it's a funding issue. I think more money needs to be put in that as that particular problem within our uh, society grows. And unfortunately, what's happened in a lot of areas is your county sheriff's department actually has to uh, deal with these people uh, that, you know, have a mental uh, disability of some sort. And the fact of the matter is they're sick, they're ill, and they don't belong in jail, they belong in the hospital. So as soon as we can uh, cut down on that waiting list that uh, has built up and uh, get these people in the hospital Time where they need up. to be. Time is up, Mr. Phelps, thank you very much. And let's go to another question. This one, uh, Mr. Phelps, you can answer first. Uh, should universal high-speed broadband access be considered an essential right for Kansans? If so, how do we go about achieving that? Repeat question. Should universal high-speed broadband access be considered an essential right for Kansans? If so, how do we go about achieving that? I don't know if, you, if I want to look at it as a right, but I think it's a necessity, and I think it's also a fairness issue. And, uh, you know, we want our rural areas to uh, thrive because that's where a lot of our food products are, uh, are developed and uh, grown and so forth. And subsequently, we do have areas that have been, I mean, this has been an issue uh, for many years uh, about getting that broadband uh, uh, connectivity in all those rural areas. Obviously, it's a funding issue, and I think there's some federal money available for that as well. And I think once and for all, we need to really stay focused on that especially as we find ourselves in a, in a time now where more and more people can, uh, you know, work from home. We can have people, uh, you know, right in western Kansas working for a company out of New York or California. And so I think it's imperative if we want to grow economically that we uh, pursue having broadband, high-speed broadband ava available to uh, every part of Kansas. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. And the same question for Representative Wassinger. Should universal high-speed broadband access be considered an essential right for Kansans? If so, how do we go about achieving that? Uh, I, I'm not sure I would I'd go as far as to say it's a, a, a right for every Kansan, but I think that the state is needs to work harder to get broadband throughout the state so that we, like I said, level the playing field. We, I went to a lot of different meetings. One was where they're working with utility companies to expand it. Uh, they're working with uh, microcells that can help distribute the uh, broadband capability. So I think as long as we continue to seek answers and other ways to get everyone um, hooked up to internet, I think that we will we will finally get it done, and it's just a lot of money. So we need we need private and we need public par partnerships to get it all done. And I think we're very much lurk working in that direction. Okay, thank you, Representative Wassinger. And now our next question, Representative Wassinger, you can answer first. COVID nineteen presents a number of challenges to our public education system. What specific policies and approaches do you support? that can help weather these challenges to public education? No, I had a meeting with the uh, USD 489 uh, superintendent today and we, we kind of visited about that. And he uh, also believed that, you know, we need to take each, each incident and everything that's going on and, and, and treat every, everything as it comes up. Um, they'll be integrating online learning with face-to-face uh, -face studies. We know that children learn in different ways. Some are audio learners, some are visual learners, some, and some don't have access to the internet, which is was not as, as prevalent where, I, where uh, our district is. But we, we need to make sure that we meet the needs of these children because we've had a huge increase in suicides of teenagers because they're being isolated. Um, like just like a lot of the um, seniors are being isolated and, and it's we've got to figure out how to fix that as well. Okay, thank you Representative Wassinger and now the same question for Mr. Phelps. COVID-19 presents a number of challenges to our public education system. What specific policies and approaches do you support that can help weather these challenges to public education? Uh, the COVID-19 has affected, uh, you know, different parts of the state, uh, you know, differently. I mentioned we have a thousand, over a thousand uh, COVID cases 
total in uh, Ellis County and counties around us uh, don't have one. So uh, I think um, each, uh, you know, the State Department of Education, you know, can require uh, all these uh, districts, you know, to have a plan in place. We're, in, we're going through a, you know, a, a new normal. Uh, I hope it's not a new normal, but the fact of the matter is we're going through a period here that's uh, new to everybody. And I think uh, everybody's trying to handle it as best they can. I've talked to a number of parents, I've talked to teachers, and I've even talked to their kids. And uh, you know, at first it was a real struggle. Uh, many of them, I think, are, are getting used to it. As Representative Wassinger said, some people learn differently. But the fact of the matter is, uh, we have to do what we have to do to keep people safe. And if it means learning from home, distance learning, that's the way it's going to be. Fort Hayes is very successful with distance learning, of course. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Time's up. And the next question, Mr. Phelps, you can answer first. Uh, if COVID-19 cases increase as we go through this coming flu season, would you support a shutdown or restrictions on businesses and citizens to meet this increase? I think it's imperative that we have to consider that because all we have to do is, uh, you know, look across the United States uh, at states that had shut down, flattened the curve, and then opened up too soon. Florida and Texas come to mind and Arizona as well. But we can also look, uh, you know, beyond our borders. Uh, the country of New Zealand is a real interesting story in that uh, when the COVID-19 broke out, they uh, immediately shut down their borders as far as incoming tourists and so forth. And they also shut down non-essential businesses in their schools. I know it was painful, but they flattened their curve to the point where I don't believe they've had a, an active case in about 100 days. It's an extreme approach to it, but they did it. And I think if we don't uh, take on that uh, approach here in, the, in, in Kansas, it's just going to keep, uh, it's just going to be a problem. And right now, I don't think we've seen the worst of it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Phelps. And now the same question for Representative Wassinger. If COVID-19 if COVID-19 cases increase as we go through the flu season this coming winter, would you support a shutdown or restrictions on businesses and citizens to meet this increase? You know, the shutdown of the state has been a serious, serious problem for our economy. We shut everything down again. We're going to have more problems. Uh, I think Everyone just needs to, uh, I, I, I don't know how many businesses will not even come back. So I do not support closing down the state again because we're already losing so many businesses and, and I've gotten so many phone calls from people who can't pay employees or they can't, uh, they can't keep, their, they're not, and who decides who's essential? Uh, when people called me to ask if they were essential, I said, I consider you essential until someone tells you that you have to shut down. There were no reason, there's no reason why some of those businesses shut down, but we do need to be respectful of other people and their health at all times. Great. Thank you, Representative Wassinger. And let's move on to another question. Representative Wassinger, you go first here. Um, how do we improve the quality of public education in Kansas? What specific policies or funding approaches would you advocate to improve public education? Well, we keep throwing money at public education and nothing seems to be changing. But the problem is, is that I, I, there's very little accountability uh, as to where the um, schools are spending the money. And a lot of administrators are getting raises and, and they're putting the money towards things other than the classroom and the teachers. If we want to see an increase in our graduation rate and the uh, abilities of our public schools to, to put out quality students, whether they're low income or not, it is, is imperative. Um, so I really think that's, that's, what I, <laughs> that's my answer. Thank but, you, Representative Wassinger. And now the same question for Mr. Phelps. How do we improve the quality of public education in Kansas? What specific policies or funding approaches would you advocate to improve public education? I always uh, relied on the uh, counsel and advice of uh, longtime uh, Deputy Secretary of uh, Education, Dale Dennis, who is one of the foremost experts on school finance. And Dale always said that there's a direct correlation between funding and outcomes. And uh, what Representative Wasser uh, mentioned here is an age-old argument about people that aren't really supportive of K-12 education. 
making references as throwing money at education. These are the kids in our, in our state. This is our future. I don't consider investing in them throwing money at anything. When I first entered the legislature in 1997, uh, we, we ranked in the top 5% in uh, ACT scores, or combined ACT, SAT scores, NAEP reading scores, graduation levels, uh, you know, low truancy levels and everything. We were a leader, one of the leaders in the state. We've dropped down now to the middle in all those categories because of all the cuts to education that have taken place. And it goes down very fast. Dale Dennis will tell you that you cut funding, then you'll see those okay. results in a year. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Time is up. And the next question here, Mr. Phelps, you can answer first. How can we overcome challenges facing public transportation in rural Kansas specifically? They've uh, addressed that a number of ways over the years. We've got uh, various access vans that, you know, uh, trans, you know, travel between various communities, and uh, and I think some of the medical centers, you know, uh, uh, provide transportation. Uh, that is a issue that really hasn't, uh, you know, been to the forefront. Uh, you know, I haven't gotten a lot of information on that as far as, as, far as um, you know, what we can do as far as funding on that. I, I can't imagine what kind of a fiscal note that would be on it. But we could start off by making sure they have decent roads to travel on in the first place. And then uh, that's going to be something that some of our EcoDevo groups need to get together on and figure out some way to coordinate that and get communities to participate in that together. Thank you, Mr. Phelps and Representative Wassinger. Same question, how can we overcome challenges facing public transportation in rural Kansas specifically? Well, I think one of the, one of the things that does help is the access van and, and, and programs like that. Having a, uh, a large busing or subway is not feasible in, in Western Kansas. So we need to look to local communities to provide some uh, transportation for the, the, the people that need it the most. You know, but the biggest thing we have to worry about in Western Kansas is, is that we're losing population left and right. And so we need to figure out how to stem that flow of, of brain power and people out of the state of Kansas and, and get back get them back and then figure out how to get them places. And we have put more money back into transportation. Prior to my being in the legislature, the, 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 uh, they were taking money out of transportation to balance the budget. And that can't happen anymore. We've got to stop doing that. Okay, thank you, Representative Wassinger. And our next question uh, for Representative Wassinger to answer first. Uh, what are the top three challenges facing Kansan farmers? And how do we meet these challenges? Um, weather. Um, I, th I think, I I'm not quite sure how we can do that, but I do know that there are farmers like uh, Bryce Custer who is doing cover crops. His, his ground, he's renewing his ground in Kansas. And I think between water conservation and using new farming practices uh, perhaps will help farmers as we go along. And I'm excited because this is a young generation that's trying to, to change agriculture for the better. So in the meantime, um, we can't raise commodity prices, but we can help these farmers be more efficient on their farms. Okay, great. Thank you, Representative Wassinger. And now the same question for Mr. Phelps. Um, how can we, or I'm sorry, what are the top three challenges facing Kansan farmers and how do we meet those challenges? It seems to me that uh, what, what the, uh, besets a lot of uh, uh, people, in, uh, you know, that are in the farming industry and uh, all over Kansas, obviously is finances and that, you know, is a direct result of, uh, you know, a decline in markets overseas, whether it be through, uh, um, you know, the uh, cutting off China from buying our wheat or whatever the case may be. So in the meantime, though, uh, you know, we have farmers trying to get rid of or try to sell their uh, milo, for instance, and not having markets for it. So alternative crops is something that's been very prevalent in the legislature the last few years, uh, most notably industrial hemp, which is a product uh, or a plant that can be grown uh, in dry conditions. It's not affected by drought. And the, the markets are, you know, within our, our country's borders. We don't have to sell them overseas. 
Right now it's a processing uh, issue that comes to play there. And also uh, farmers, I think, oftentimes uh, will tell me that uh, some of the regulatory things are holding them up. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Time's up. We have one more question here before we go to our closing statements. Um, and uh, for this uh, final question, Mr. Phelps, you can answer first. Uh, what do you want Western Kansas to look like 30 years from now? Paint us a picture. Paint you a picture of Western Kansas? Boy, if the sunsets lately uh, are hard to beat. It's been beautiful. Unfortunately, a lot of that is a result of the um, you know, the unfortunate incidents in uh, California and Oregon and so forth with their fires. But uh, I love, and I, uh, Western Kansas, I'm very bullish on ver Western Kansas. I grew up here and I've lived here all my life. Uh, it, it breaks, it, it's very sad to, you know, see some of the smaller communities, uh, you know, uh, losing their population and so forth. So whatever we can do, I think, to stabilize populations in Western Kansas, that comes about through creating op opportunities. And uh, there may be a silver lining with the COVID-19, if you can believe it, and that is more and more ability for people to work from home. And subsequently, you might see more people being able to stay in Western Kansas. And then have they have these disasters all over the country, maybe more people will move here because it's a very safe and very wholesome place to live. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. And now a uh, final question here for Representative Wassinger, same question. What do you want Western Kansas to look like 30 years from now? Paint us a picture. Well, I, my whole purpose for being in politics was to leave Kansas a better place than what I came to. That's what should be all of our goals. And I think I see if we can, we can expand broadband, we can have people stay in rural areas and have them be successful and, and compete worldwide with, their, with whatever products and, and goods that they're, they're selling. So I, what I'd like to see is that we, we, we are able to control the population decline, that people will come back and they'll see the value of living in, in the beautiful uh, state that we live in. But uh, between broadband and uh, trying to help people with childcare, I think we can, we can maybe make that happen. So. Thank you, Representative Wassinger. And that's all for questions. We are now going to move to our final phase of the debate. That are the closing statements. And to begin our closing statements, we will ask Representative Wassinger to uh, present hers. Right. Well, thank you very much for allowing us to be here tonight. I really appreciate it. I love Kansas, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to represent our part of Kansas in Topeka and like to go back. I appreciate the chance to once again say that I stand up for Kansans in matters of lower taxes and, and preserving life uh, and helping our farmers, small businesses, uh, big and small, uh, and, and try to reduce regulations that bind our companies and our, 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 our uh, businesses that are having trouble staying there, staying alive. I'm pro-life. I voted for the Value Them Both Amendment, which would have brought back some needed health inspections to clinics and facilities who provide services to women, and I'm a firm believer in term limits. I don't think anyone should be in office as long as 18 years. I think uh, we really need to make sure that we get new people in so that we have different voices heard and we have different things going on. So. I love I love my job and I love Kansas and uh, I already got one child that moved back so I have two now in in, in Ellis County so I I just think uh, there's so much that can be done and I believe that I better serve and reflect the 111th district. Great, wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you, Representative Wassinger. And now for his closing statement, Mr. Phelps. Thank you. <clears throat> After leaving the legislature in 2018, I had little time to ponder what might be in store for me politically. It didn't take long as I was appointed to serve out an unexpired term on the Hay City Commission. That was my third stint on the commission and as in the past, I thoroughly enjoyed serving the community and being part of a planning effort that kept the city financially sound. I followed the past two legislative sessions closely and was disappointed in the lack of progress in several areas such as Medicaid expansion, which I had mentioned earlier, would have shored up our state finances. I supported this measure when it passed overwhelmingly in the House in 2017, only to fall 
fail in the Senate due to the uh, Republican leadership thwarting, uh, thwarting uh, floor debate and a vote. Our current area legislators representing Hayes and Ellis County have not been supportive and a result of their opposition, the votes for passes weren't in the past two years. Due to this issue, as well as a lack of strong support for education, I filed for the 111 district seat in the legislature last November. If my campaign is successful, I plan to return to Topeka and help restore the cooperative effort that was present in 2017 and 2018 sessions and work toward a better Kansas. For those viewers in the 111 district, I'd appreciate your vote and look forward to representing you again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phelps, and thank you, Representative Wassinger. It was a rich, informative, detailed debate. I appreciate it. Uh, this is Dr. Jay Steinmetz here on Smoky Hills Public Television. Thank you for joining us, and good evening. Sunflower Electric Power Corporation, cooperative members working together to generate power so you can enjoy the benefits of life in central and western Kansas. Sunflower Electric Power Corporation, energy done right.